Terry, who has more on this developing situation. Ron, thank you. I'm joined now by Tara Helfman, a professor of international law at Syracuse University's Law School. Um, welcome. Thank you for being with us on thank such you. short notice. Uh, this is a game changer, isn't it? It is. Very nice. Um, because until now, we haven't had a, a mass civilian casualty in this conflict of civilians who weren't nationals, either of Ukraine or of Russia. Instead, what we have is most likely a largely international uh, civilian makeup of this, uh, of this passenger manifesto, uh, manifest, all of whom were taken down in uh, what was clearly a targeted attack. Right. And we know now that there were a lot of Dutch on the plane, obviously it took off from Amsterdam. There, uh, the U.S. is furiously working to find out if there were any Americans on board. Um, talk a little, if you would, about can we find out who did this? Because the Ukrainians are saying this is the work of Russia. Um, is there a way to know for sure? Well, there's no doubt that Russia has been sending weapons, um, training, and uh, uh, even personnel into Ukraine to support separatist organizations there. Um, what happens with respect to this particular attack will depend on the investigation that follows. It is possible to figure out um, what type of missile was used, um, whether it was of Russian origin. It is possible to figure out from whose soil it was fired. Um, but all of that will depend on how, uh, how much access international investigators have to the scene. Mm -hmm. Which is in the Ukraine, and obviously the Russians have a grip on that area. The separatists are there. So if, in fact, it can be determined that Russia was behind this, does that automatically mean that Vladimir Putin's signature is on this? I, th I think so, I, it, without a doubt. Um, the because um, U.S. the United States, which has been monitoring the situation very carefully, has issued um, a, a, a statement. It issued a statement, I think, on the 17th, just a, a few days ago, or, or the 16th, um, identifying countless shipments of um, of, of uh, war materiel into Ukraine from Russia. Mm -hmm. And so this, this is basically a missile that would be sealed with a kiss from Vladimir. Right. The real question now for the international community is how do we respond? And I think there are mechanisms in place that would allow for a very robust response short of an armed engagement. Mm -hmm. Why would Putin, if he did in fact seal this with a kiss, what what does he have to gain by doing this? I mean, the targets are civilians. Uh, the world is outraged. What does he gain? Well, I guess there there uh, we have to predicate that on 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 one question, which is, was this a deliberate strike on a civilian aircraft? It's quite possible, um, as has been the case in in misidentified. Um, play, uh, uh, plane shootings before, plane uh, strikes before, right. that um, Putin thought that this may have been, or the, the, those responsible right. at the end of the day for firing the missile, um, believed that this plane was uh, an espionage, engaged in an espionage, an espionage mission, um, that it was uh, a, a, uh, an Air Force plane mm -hmm. um, engaged in some kind of um, military mission. Um, so it could just be a case of misattribution. Right. Um, and I would be very surprised if um, Putin were to have uh, deliberately mm -hmm. uh, right. struck right. a civilian plane. But the idea that this is possible, I mean, we have heard that this technology exists, but to know that a commercial airliner flying at 33,000 feet could be just blown out of the sky and you know about al-Qaeda and other terrorists around the world who uh, want to hurt Americans yeah. wherever they are. I mean, this is terrifying. It certainly is. This is sort of the um, one of the nightmare scenarios that was imagined in the wake of 9-11 in the United States. The possibility that a terrorist organization might be able to get hold of a surface-to-air missile and begin targeting civilian aircraft in order to further a political agenda um, became very much a, a, a central focus 
of the Federal Aviation uh, Administration, of uh, the Department of Defense, and it began to uh, very uh, preemptive measures were put in place in U.S. airports and U.S. air bases around the world. Well, Tara Hoffman, you've given a, a lot to think about as we uh, learn more about this um, in, in the next few hours, days, and weeks. And uh, I guess the international response is something that we will wait for as we learn more about who is responsible for this heinous act. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Maybe we'll call on you again to sort of help us suss it out when we learn more. Oh, thank you very much. It was thank a pleasure. You. All right, now for continuing coverage of the crash of the Malaysian Airlines flight, stay with ABC News and News Channel 9 for a special one-hour edition of World News coming up.